Welcome to That's a Good Fish. Here we go. You got that? You got that? We were able to film for a little over a week in Wyoming and Montana. Being able to drive across the country and experience places as beautiful as these was an awesome opportunity. The trip was broken up into two episodes, so you guys can really experience all of the awesome footage. The crew started on a tailwater stretch of the North Platte River that runs through Wyoming. It goes by the name of the Miracle Mile, an incredible fishery with big trout and awesome scenery. Hey guys, welcome back to That's a Good Fish. We're out here in uh, Wyoming today on the Miracle Mile and uh, later in the episode we may tell you some reasons why it's called the Miracle Mile. Got a great crew out here with me today. I got a new guy you're going to meet. His name's Gus Gillywater. Great guy, great fisherman and uh, another guy. Uh, his name is Roy Fixens and you're going you're gonna to get to meet him and he, uh, he really knows these parts out here really well. He used to be an Indian tracker and uh, he retired from that so uh, he's back out here today. Going for brown trout, rainbow trout, Maybe even a few walleye in this little tailwater stretch. And uh, as you can see out here, the wildlife is abundant. I mean, look at these, these pelicans over here. Stick around, and uh, we're going to catch some fish, and, and you're going to enjoy a good episode. Okay, we're here on the Miracle Mile. Uh, the Miracle Mile, when you come out west, it can be pretty daunting because there's a lot of water out here and a lot of it is good, but it, some places are better than others. And this is a prime example of a place you want to look for when you're out here. We've had a long stretch below this where it's just flat all the way across. We caught one, but really we didn't get into any concentrations of fish and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for big ones. We're looking for concentrations of fish. So here we've got, behind Lester, we've got a little side creek coming in. We've got the main channel coming in this way. Those two are coming together. And between them, we have a little bit of slower water where those big ones like to hang out. The big ones like to hang out where near the fast water, but in the slow water. So you wanna find those places where those two things meet. Hey guys, uh, it's about 5 o'clock. Uh, we're down here in the canyon section of the Miracle Mile. Uh, really like fishing the canyon section because it's probably got some of the deepest water you're going to find. Also, it's got a lot of ambush positions for brown trout and rainbow trout. Um, we're throwing 8 ounce jigs that we uh, tie ourselves with out of uh, Marabou. And uh, we're going to try and catch some fish for you guys, so uh, stick around. Big Mir Miracle Mile rainbow, I'm going to have to go chasing. Woo! This is a big one. He was sitting out in a deep run. With trout like this, you really got to play him. Let him wear themselves out. I'm throwing it on six pound line. Got to be careful. Big rocks out here. Let him wear himself out. Dangerous time right here for old Lester Whiteside. Oh, it's a big brown. This is probably a 20 inch brown here. I think he's about done. Roy Fixon's down here trying to fix and get me a fish. He is right there. Woo! Wow. Miracle Mile Brown for you folks right there. Right there. Look at that. Nice. We're going to measure him. Nice brown trout. Tail to head. 20 and a half inches. 20 and a half inches, folks. That's a good fish right there. Okay guys, when you catch a big fish like this, you want to 
first off, you want to release them if you can. Um, now, if you catch a big enough fish, today's day and age, a replica is probably just as good as a skin mount. Um, with a trout like this, you really want to put him in the water, kind of hold his tail, um, and let the water run through his gills a little bit until he, you feel him swim out of your hand. Um, and sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it so you uh, can manage your fishery and, and keep big fish in the water. So he's starting to really show some signs of swimming out of my hand right now. And once he tries to swim out, you're just going to let him go just like that. The main way you work these jigs is they're, they're pretty heavy. You cast it out there, let it fall for a second or two, and then you just want to really keep tension on your line, feel your, feel your jig as it's going through the riffle, and all, a lot of times you'll feel them hit it on the fall or right when you pick your jig up. So you never want to lose contact with your jig. If you have slack in your line, trout are so quick, they can hit it quick and you won't even know you have a bite. So you have to be ready, you have to be able to feel your line. A lot of people put their two fingers on their line like this so they can feel anything that hits their line. There you go. Oh, oh, nice brown. Roy, get on downstream, I'll help you. Hold on, hold on. There you go. I wonder if I threw one over there. That'd be fun. I'm not kidding you, I got one. I think this is a big fish, guys. I can't even move him. Cannot even move this fish. If he stays up here, I think I may have a chance. I'm telling you, this is a giant fish. Well, I'm, he's gonna go down here and I'm gonna lose him. There he goes. God dang it. Fish on folks, Miracle Mile. Articulated jig, I'll show you guys that if I get this fish in here. Just lost a giant fish, which I think is why they call it the Miracle Mile, because it's a miracle if you catch one of the big fish in this area right here. Now, if I would have hooked him in this area, I may have had a fighting chance. I don't know how big this fish is, but it feels like a pretty decent one. It's a nice fish here, guys. Maybe a 20 inch brown. The hardest part is keeping him out of the rocks. So there's a boulder right here. I'm just trying to lift my line and try and keep them out of that boulder there. And this is where it helps if you, if you fish with someone else and you can just guide the fish to your partner. This is a nice fish here, guys. He's just sitting in the riffle right now. Don't pull on. And there you go, on the big articulated jig. Look at that, guys. Not as big as I thought, but still a nice fish. Uh, really nice brown trout. The browns are really starting to feed and it's starting to get into evening. The water's a little bit dingy and I think that actually kind of helps the brown bite. So I tied on a white articulated jig and I'm gonna talk about that in a sec, but let's get a few pictures of this and get him back in the water. Okay guys, I just caught that nice fish and I just lost a giant. And what I'm catching them on is these, they're called articulated jigs. And I'm going to hold that close and we'll talk about it later in Tackle Talk later in the episode. But basically, what it is, is it's almost a streamer on the backside. And what I use for those is I, I tie these myself with marabou. And I got a little bit of uh, fur up here that's colored red to look like a bleeding shad. But the back hook is a, is a octopus hook, a gamakatsu octopus hook. And what, I, what happens is I, I tie almost a streamer with the octopus hook. I get some, some steel wire, thin steel wire, and then I tie that, thread it through, and hook the streamer to it. Now once I got the streamer hooked on, it's almost like its own little jointed, uh, jointed piece at the back so it can really whip in the water. And then I go ahead and tie just a regular jig like I normally do on the front. But what you see is it is a giant jig. And a lot of people say, trout don't eat stuff this big. You know, there's fly fishermen throwing stuff this big, and you can catch them on stuff like that. 
But the Browns, in my experience, are looking for a big meal, and this articulated jig is a big meal, and it looks like a shad or big minnow in the water. It, it's a great bait to use, and we'll talk about it later in Tackle Talk. Thanks. Hey guys, it's time for our viewer question of the week, and actually we got a couple viewer questions for you this week. The first one comes from Rick in Chicago, Illinois, and Rick writes, do you ever fly fish for these brown and rainbow trout? Um, well, that's a good question, Rick, and I appreciate you uh, sending your question in for us, but um, as you can see in this episode, I didn't really fly fish a lot, and the crew with me doesn't fly fish a lot, and that's just something that's kind of happened throughout the years. We, uh, we've been always taught to throw marabou jigs and, uh, and stick baits and stuff like that, and in my experience when I'm fishing these streams, these browns and rainbow trout, I've caught more bigger fish throwing the marabou jigs and the stick baits than I have with a fly rod. Now I'm not saying you can't catch big fish with a fly rod because people obviously do it all the time, but personal preference for me, I always am throwing marabou jig or a stick bait or something of that nature. Um, once again, thanks for the call, Rick. Um, this next one comes from Stacy in Destin, Florida, and Stacy wants to know, what are the different habitats for brown trout compared to rainbow trout? That's an excellent question. And, um, once again, thanks for calling in, Stacy. As you can see in the episode so far, there's a lot of runs, there's eddies, um, there's riffles. Um, in my experience, fishing these streams throughout the years, I've caught more browns in the eddies in the slower current than I have uh, rainbows. And I believe that rainbow or rainbows are more feeding in the current on the plankton and the bugs and stuff like that, whereas the browns are real extreme ambush predators and they're feeding on the minnows, the shiners, even other rainbow trout that come through the riffle and go into that slower current, they're waiting to ambush them. And you can catch them both ways. Browns tend to lay more in the eddies and slower current waiting to ambush something that comes by. Rainbows are in that faster, deeper runs where they're feeding on bugs and smaller stuff like that. Thanks for the questions, guys. Let's get back to the action. Yeah, the walleye. We got a good fish here, folks. I'm gonna go help Roy out. Nice, is that a rainbow? Try and fall down. It's not. There you go. Nice rainbow. You know, the funny thing is, Roy, Roy Fixon's just caught back-to-back -back walleye and now he, now he hooks a nice rainbow like that. Rainbow. Big one. I'm at the will of the fish. This is another big fish and it's going to be a miracle if I get him in. Trying to get me. He is trying to get under this rock right here. Golly, get out of there. Big brown. Here he comes. Come on, Roy. Woo! That's a good fish. What you got here is a 20 plus inch brown on the Miracle Mile here in Wyoming. Another one on the articulated jig. I, uh, I've had some bad luck hooking a few fish that are just, you're at the will of the fish and that's just how it is. But look at this fish. I mean, this is a nice fish. Something that a lot of people don't get to do. And if you do have a chance to come up here, fish out west for these wild brown trout, rainbow trout, you gotta do it because it's a great time catching these fish on light line. We're gonna get this guy back in the water, get a picture. Once again, that's a good fish. There 
there he is. Big one. Heads up, he's big. Another big fish here, guys. I gotta guide him over here. Did you see him there? Got him. Miracle Mile. What a stretch of water to fish. Articulated jig again. He was really deep in that riffle out there. Um, another nice fish. Beautiful. Uh, it's getting almost dark. They're starting to feed really well. We're going to get this guy back in the water. Another nice fish. Stick around, guys. Tackle Talk. In this segment of Tackle Talk, we're going to be talking about the lures that we use to catch these beautiful brown and rainbow trout, as well as the reels and even the line that we use. Check it out. Hey guys, first thing I wanna to talk to you about is the reels and the lines that we like to use when we're throwing these baits for these trout. First reel I'd like to show you is this is an Abumatic 170 made by Abu Garcia. It's a closed face reel, and I like throwing these over spinning reels because not only does this have the regular drag right here that you just crank down, but when you're reeling, and if you have a big fish on, and you can't, you don't have time to be messing with this manual drag, this reel has a backup drag, and all you gotta do is back up that reel handle, and it'll let out a lot of drag for you in a little bit of time. Um, it can really save you from breaking off a big fish. It's done it to me a lot. I like throwing um, eight pound monofilament on this. You can get away with six as well. If it's clearer, I prefer six. But in the water we were fishing in the Miracle Mile, I like eight pound tests so you can kind of get a little more strength and pull them away from the boulders. The other reel that I like to use is a bait casting reel. This is an Abu Garcia as well. I like throwing my CD9, my countdown stick baits on these, and I like using 10 pound monofilament on these. Um, and the reason for that is, is I like having a little stiffer rod. I like throwing them on a bait casting rod. It helps you when you're throwing those stick baits. You can actually cast them pretty well. And when you hook a nice trout, you feel a lot better uh, with, with it hooked on a stick, stick bait rod and a bait casting reel. So those are a few of the reels and the lines that we like to use. Uh, we'll talk about the baits next. Hey guys, I got a few baits with me that I wanted to show you that'll help you catch some fish if you ever travel out to the Miracle Mile or somewhere like that. So this is the uh, Rapala CD9 that I was talking about. Uh, CD stands for its countdown, so what it does is when you throw it in the water, it actually sinks and you can count it down the seconds and that will be around the depth that it'll be at. This one goes pretty deep and in the actual river that we're talking about, um, this is a good bait to use. And this is a rainbow trout color, which obviously in the tailwater stretches and stuff like that, there's a lot of rainbows swimming around in there and the browns really like to gorge on them. Another bait I want to show you is the same CD9, but in a little bit different color. This is the uh, color in the golden shiner pattern. As you can see, it's got a black back with a gold body, and then it's got a little bit of red on the throat there. And uh, it's a really good bait to use, really good color. We've caught a lot of nice fish on these. Also, you got the marabou jigs. And now this is an articulated jig, as you can see. It's got the, the almost the second joint on the back that's basically a streamer. This is a white one and this is uh, in the 8th ounce. I caught a lot of nice fish on this as well throughout the episode. Um, and these are a little bit more complex to tie, but if you do it, you can catch some big fish on them. Um, or you got the regular marabou jig. Um, and this is, this is what a lot of people tie. You know, marabou, I like white with some black in there. I also like black and yellow. I like olive. There's a lot of different colors and you, basically you just find confidence in a color and that gets you to throw it more and actually you get more bites. Now I don't like really vibrant colors. Um, basically I like to be a little bit natural with them. And it's really fun to catch a fish on a bait you actually tied. Uh, it feels pretty rewarding. So that's a little bit of the baits we've been using um, and catch a lot of fish on. So if you ever 
are looking for something for your tackle box for out west or in a nice trout stream, check out those baits right there. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, thanks for watching That's a Good Fish along the rocks where we traveled down to Wyoming and fished the Miracle Mile. We had a great time, great scenery, caught a lot of big fish. If you ever get a chance to head down to the Miracle Mile, I encourage you to do so. When you go down there, think about throwing the marabou jigs like we talked about. It could be articulated jigs if you want to throw something bigger. But mainly, if you want to throw a marabou jig, I'd encourage you to throw a quarter ounce or an eighth ounce due to the fast currents and deep water. Um, thanks for watching That's a Good Fish. We appreciate all the support over the years. Just make sure you check out our website, that's a good fish.com. We're on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. We're there. Stick around with us. Thanks. Well, sometimes the camera isn't rolling in the biggest spots, and that's what happened with this giant brown my uncle caught. Uh, we did the measurements and everything, and it estimated to weigh 16 to 18 pounds and 29 inches long. Just a giant fish and, and really we caught a lot of really nice fish, multiple fish over 20 inches, mixed bag of browns, rainbows, also some walleye. Um, that's the beauty of this stretch of river. You can really just catch a plethora of different kinds of fish and obviously the scenery is, is always just a bonus.